Join us as we discover the heart of D.C. Without breaking the bank. A family adventure. Filled with thrills. And budget-friendly finds. We're doing this. We're going to D.C. with a family trip of five kids. We're going to explore some museums. We're going to check out D.C. I've never been before. Traffic sounds bad. Let's hope we can make it through this. We needed a budget-friendly vacation. Here is our story of our trip to Washington, D.C. and all it has to offer on a very tight budget. Day one. We went to the National Zoo and it cost us nothing but the parking fee. We packed all of our food and brought it with us. We had our hats and sunscreen and water bottles and made a fun day of this free to the public museum. Thank you. These here are the humanoid children. They come from the monkey species family. They're very difficult at um, <laughs> listening. They're very, very, um, what's the word? That one's feral and it bites. The zoo offers lots of wonderful sights from tigers, lions, different types of bears, a water attraction that the kids could splash in, picnic areas, elephants. Our favorite part was the gorillas and the orangutans. Seeing the baby gorilla was absolutely just a treat. When we started this adventure, I wanted to keep cost as cheap as possible. I get really hot and I need to sleep uh, comfortably in the cool and the temperatures were gonna be kissing 100 Fahrenheit uh, the week we were gonna go. I investigated Cherry Hill Campground. It was 120 a night for hookups. And I bought an RV so I wouldn't have to buy a hotel. So then we checked out Greenbelt in Maryland, which was $20, but it's primitive camping and no hookups. Uh, but we do have a generator. So according to the campground rules, you can run a generator till 10 o'clock at night. There was seven other neighbors and they did the exact same thing we did. And for that, we were able to stay four nights at $20 a night and spend a grand total of $80 for our entire trip. Day two. So you really, if you have it in your budget, I definitely recommend going to the Museum of the Bible. There are some of the most fascinating pieces that are there. There is pieces of the Dead Sea Scroll, things that have been touched during the presence of our disciples. It is just the most exhilarating place. And when you walk in, there is a screen above you on the ceiling that changes from different ceilings of different chapels, the Sistine Chapel. It's just a fantastic place and I definitely would recommend it, especially in the hot heat. The cold air was probably one of Mike's favorite things other than seeing these beautiful Bibles and Dead Sea Scrolls and just everything it has to offer. <laughs> Mademoiselle! <laughs> This hat belongs to you. Whether you are a follower of Jesus or not, even if you are Jewish, even if you are, have any faith of any sort, or even if you're just curious about history, this is definitely a place to go. For those of us who are Christians like myself, it was very inspiring to see all of the writings of our disciples and prophets, and just to, to see it, some pieces to lay hands on it and just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and people who have been touched by God and Jesus and from Abraham all the way down. 
it's definitely an experience that I am very happy to have had. This is now my third visit, and I definitely look forward to going again. Day, Day three. It takes an amazing creative cook with a really good sense of humor to cook in an RV. So I just made scrambled eggs with sausage and um, homemade pancakes. I made these from scratch. Don't they look amazing? I, you should have seen the amount of effort it took to put them inside the plastic bags. Sorry. So I'm getting ready to serve everybody some pancakes, sausage, scrambled eggs, RV style, pop style. This is day three of camping. And we're going to have us a great big breakfast. How are y'all today? <laughs> How's living in D.C.? Good. Good? Cute little restaurant. With seven of us, the tram seemed to be a little bit too expensive. We decided to drive directly to where we were looking to go. We used an app called Spot Hero that allows you to search for parking spots that are available for rent. You just pick your time and when you're going to be there. And it's much cheaper than using the garage's own um, setup. Uh, we were only two blocks away and it made it so much easier. You got to talk whale though. That's the only way they can hear you. Oh. Museum of Natural History hosts some of the most impressive specimens that our country has to offer. There are taxidermied species from all over our country. There is the Hope Diamond. There are gems of absolutely every description. There are fossils. There are mummies. Um, you think there are butterflies, all, just everything you can actually think of when you think of natural history. That is what is there. Absolutely fascinating place, free to the public, and again, your kids or your adult kids of any age will love it. Just definitely go see it, budget friendly, and so much fun. After leaving the Museum of Natural History, it was a short walk down to the Washington Monument and then down to the World War II Memorial, where they have the beautiful reflecting pond. While you can't swim in it, they do allow you to dip your feet in it and just to enjoy your surroundings and looking at all of the monuments to each state and territory and just taking it all in. Definitely a fun thing to do on such a hot day. Day four. Now, while Washington, D.C. hosts two air and space museums, I personally, my favorite is the Odvar Hazy that is out near Dulles Airport. It has a space shuttle. It has a stealth bomber. We were so lucky to have had two interactions with NASA, um, either former or current people who were within NASA or the military who were able to answer questions for us live that anyone could just walk up and talk directly to them and they answered any of our questions. Um, so that was a lot of fun. The, the very real, interactive, um, genuine experience with that. Getting to see some of the very first aircraft, including hot air balloons, blimps, airplanes. Very, very cool. Again, free to the public. There was a small parking fee. We managed to complete four adventurous days in DC without breaking the bank. We brought our own food and drinks. Zoo was free, but the parking was $15. The Bible Museum was $239 for seven people. Parking was $15. Natural History Museum was free. Parking was done within Spot Hero at $15 for the whole day. Udvar Hazy was free. Parking was $15. We ate out one night at Wendy's using the app, the $5 off $25, and our free Frosties with our Frosty tags. On our way home, we used the McDonald's points and ate for $20. The grand total altogether came to $452.
We've got a lot of really cool places that we're going to go see this year, and we hope to bring you along with us. If you would, please subscribe to stay in touch with what we're doing. We'd love to have you join. And uh, also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you know when any new uploads are done.